what you are saying is that there's something else going on within adolescence, in, if you will, the basic biology or physiology of the human brain, which makes the handling of fear and fear extinction different because of that development, whatever the surrounding social, exactly. et cetera. And that's what you're saying. Exactly. There was a surge of connections between a region of the brain called the hippocampus with the prefrontal cortex that occurred only during adolescence. This is sort of, I, I can't really explain to you but that fully, but when Connor, myself, and an other a postdoctoral fellow, Siobhan Patwell, first saw this data, it was just like, we, there's very few moments in a scientist's life where you actually notice that you found something that's very different. The, that in adolescence, that this thing occurs and that n everyone had missed it to some degree. Everyone knows that the brain grows and, and synapses and there, there's a sort of type of pruning. This was mainly done by Patricia Goldman Rakish and Pasco Rakish that has shown this, but everyone thought it was a global phenomenon. We didn't know that it was so specific between one connection and between the hippocampus, which is mainly thought of previously as a spatial learning sort of brain region, and the prefrontal cortex, which is a decision-making region. Both Connor and Siobhan then came up with the brilliant idea of thinking, if the hippocampus is really wiring up so much, can we do something to stimulate the hippocampus to actually extinguish fears better during this period of time? And so they, it was sort of like an end run. If we know that adolescents have, are having difficulty extinguishing fears, if you then give them a hippocampal-based stimulation, and the best type of stimulation is what we call just putting them back, it was, it's where we put them back into the same context where they had been previously stressed or shocked. And we found that actually just doing a 45 minute session of putting them back in would actually erase the memory, essentially. So, it, which was, and that if you did this in later in adulthood, it didn't work. You had to, you had a window of only during adolescence. And whenever I was seeing my patients, the soldiers that were coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, I always thought to myself, if we could ultimately develop a treatment or an intervention where we could actually build up the resilience so that if we, before we send them off, could we actually train them to act? And we know that, that if we can get them early during this window, this is actually much better than later on. This is not as far-fetched as we think because in ultimately technology has been developed to the degree that we have, for example, now virtual reality technology where you can actually create virtual Iraq, virtual tall buildings or you can actually design certain things that you could give even before a trauma occurs or even soon after a trauma occurs that you could actually use the hippocampus because that's exactly what the hippocampus does. It figures out where you are and whether or not this is a dangerous place to be or not.